The goal of this video is to show some MATLAB commands, but mainly how to use this discrete cosine transform to do some image processing. Now, we're gonna build up to this stuff over a while. Well, let's start with some basics. First of all, we need an image to work with. And so the command is imread, and we wanna save that into a variable. So we'll go ahead and say x equals imread. Have to put the file name in quotes, and it's gonna be einstein2.gif. Now, of course, whatever file you're gonna be doing needs to be inside your path. Now let's notice here, what we've got here is a 256 by 256 unsigned 8-bit integer file. So obviously can't see the whole 256 by 256, but we've got all these values which range from 0 to 255. Well, what does this image look like? There's a couple of different commands for showing the image, but the one that's going to be helpful for us is image SCX. Now, right away, there's gonna be a little bit of a problem. This is a grayscale image, but the command just kind of assumes that it's actually a color image. We will be talking about color images and how we can take this stuff to the next level and deal with color. But for right now, let's just turn that off. Let's go ahead and sit, tell it we've got color map gray. And so if I open that window, now we can see a nice grayscale image. One thing to note about that color map gray, as long as I don't close this window, it retains the idea that things are supposed to be gray. If I were to close the window and then try to display something else, it's going to immediately default back to thinking it's color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this rather than closing that window. Now, the problem is we can't really deal with a 256 by 256 image all at once in terms of doing this stuff. We know that we're dealing with matrix multiplications and things like that, and those work better on smaller matrices. So the standard thing that's done with a JPEG encoding which is basically what we're building toward here, is that they do each eight by eight block of the matrix separately. So I'm just gonna yank out an eight by eight block out of that matrix. So I'm gonna say my X block is my X, but I'm only gonna take 81 to 88 in each dimension. And now, so if I take a look at that, we get, well, it doesn't look like much of anything, but you can see what we've got. We've got an eight by eight block with all these different pixels in there. Now, I want to do some discrete cosine transform on that eight by eight matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and create my C matrix and I'm just gonna pull these commands out here. So first of all, I'm gonna set it up in a way that can be generalized. So I'm gonna start by saying how big the matrix is. And then for each dimension, for I equals one to eight and for J equals one to eight, I'm going to define C I comma J is equal to the cosine. I've got to do I minus one and two times J minus one. Remembering that the minus one comes in because we're dealing with an index from zero to seven, whereas MATLAB wants to do one to eight. And then I'm gonna take that times pi over two times n. Now obviously knowing it's eight, some of these things could be simplified. 
but I'm going to go ahead and end that loop. But now I've got to get in those extra multipliers that we get in the C matrix. So I'm going to say C is equal to the square root of 2 over n times C. And then the problem there is that remember that the first row is different for this. So we're going to have to say C 1 colon is equal to C 1 colon over the square root of 2. OK, so now I have my DCT matrix all set up. And so we want to do that two-dimensional DCT on XB. But if I try immediately, it's not going to work. Let's even just go ahead and type this thing in. Let's say my Y block is my C times my X block times C prime. And it gives me an error. And the problem is, is that it doesn't like this unsigned integer values here. So to fix that, I'm just going to go and take my XB and change it to double XB. So now my block is set up with double values rather than these unsigned integers. It lets me do the matrix multiplication. It lets me do other things. Now, before I actually do the DCT, there's another thing I want to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at my XB. I've got these values. And again, because of the way they came from, they're going to range from 0 to 255. We get a slightly better transform out of this. We're going to get a slightly better average kind of thing, which we're trying to do. If instead of going from 0 to 255, we go from negative 128 to 127. So the first thing I'm going to do then, before I do my DCT, is I'm going to say XB is XB minus ones the size of XB times 128. I'm just going to go ahead and shift all those values down so that XB now has both positive and negative values. Now let's go ahead and do that discrete toast kind two-dimensional discrete cosine transform on it. And now I've got some other matrix which has all these values. And remember, the whole goal of this is that we want to, we're going to say that some of the higher end values in the matrix, sort of the more it is to the upper left, the more important it is. The more it is to the lower right, the less important it is. So we're going to zero out some of those values. We're going to say for i equals 1 to 8, for j equals 1 to 8. For a first pass at this, and we're going to fix this later, we're going to say if i plus j is greater than 8, then y b sub i j, we're just going to zero it out. So now my y b, everything on the off diagonal and below is zero. We're basically saying that stuff's less important, so we're getting rid of it. So now let's go ahead and go back and I'm going to go ahead and for comparison purposes, I don't want to store this in the same thing. I'm going to call it XC for the compressed X. And I'm going to do my inverse DCT, which is C prime times YB times C. Remember the forward one is C times the matrix times C prime. But we're, so as we're doing inverses, we want the transposes there. And now, again, we've got a matrix there. But the big thing is we've got negative values still. It makes sense. But for the image, we can't have those negative values. So we're just going to undo what we did before. 
and we're going to say my compressed image is equal to my compressed image plus 128 times ones the size of XC. Now we should have all positive values. And so we want to see what did this compression do to our thing? Well, it'd be better if we can see these things both at the same time. So I'm going to use subplots to do that. So I'm going to do a subplot 1, 2, 1. And that one will be my original x block. Then I'm going to do a subplot 1, 2, 2. And that's going to be the image of the compressed block. And notice what we've got here. Certainly these aren't identical, but the general idea is there. Where you had dark spots in the original one, you've basically got dark spots in the compressed one. Where you've got lighter bits, you've got lighter bits. And remember that this eight by eight block is only a tiny bit of a large image. Because of that, and because we have sort of the same general idea, there's very little actual visual difference in the grand scheme of things. Let's go ahead and end this video there for right now.